Hi, welcome to a new episode of History in 7 Facts. In this show we'll explore interesting and intriguing episodes from humanity's past, from the ancient times all the way to the modern era. Today we'll talk about one of Egypt's most famous leaders, the child pharaoh Tutankhamun. One piece of stone, sculpted in a neglectful manner, found in the Valley of the Kings in Egypt, led to one of the greatest archaeological discoveries in history. The stone was the first step of the stairs that led to the tomb of ancient Egypt's famous child pharaoh, Tutankhamun. The discovery of Howard Carter in 1922 was one of the most sensational stories of the time. His tomb was found intact, with the royal seal still unbroken after more than 3,000 years. The wealth of valuable antiquities it contained was an archaeologist's dream. It took 10 years to study and catalog all the items found in the mortuary chamber. King Tut's life, though, remained a mystery. He died when he was only 19 years old, but how or why we still don't know for sure. Today his remains have been placed back into his tomb, so examining his body is no longer an option. Scientists today can only analyze the autopsy report from 1922 and some x-rays taken over 50 years ago. These clues have to be enough to answer one question. Was Tutankhamun murdered? Finding out who Tutankhamun was, was no easy task. But today we know he was the son of Akhenaten, the 10th pharaoh of the 18th dynasty. His father threw Egypt into chaos during his 17th year of rule. He abolished the priests of the old Egyptian pantheon and forbade the worship of any of the old gods except one, Aten, a deity with no earthly form represented by the sun. Akhenaten built a brand new capital, Amarna, at the cost of the country's economy. One of his wives, Nefertiti, was the one who ruled Egypt before Tutankhamun came to power. When he was a child, King Tut was raised at Amarna and was deeply connected to the political intrigues of the nation. After his father's death, his life changed radically. Akhenaten's name and all references to him were destroyed in an attempt to erase him from history. At just nine years old, young Tutankhamun was probably surrounded by those who rejected his father's policies. So when he came to power, he reinstated the old gods, opened up the temples and allowed the priest to come back. A large stone in Thebes testifies to this, stating, he restored everything that was ruined to be his monument forever and ever. He has vanquished chaos from the land and has restored harmony to her place. He has made lying a crime, the whole land being made as it was at the time of creation. King Tut and his court moved back to the old capital of Memphis. He married his half-sister and cousin Ankesinamun, which was not an unusual thing in royal families. He probably imagined a long and prosperous reign, but it wasn't so. His reign lasted for less than a decade. The mystery of Tutankhamun's sudden death couldn't be explained even after his tomb's discovery. His mummified body laid in three coffins, the last one made out of gold and shaped as his death mask. Howard Carter and his assistant Douglas Derry had a hard time opening the coffins, but when they eventually did, they found the body glued to the coffin by some type of resin. Using a chisel, they detached the body and performed an autopsy. The procedure was very invasive. They severed the head and cut the body in half. Nothing of note was discovered except for the large quantity of resin. They didn't even notice that the sternum and a few ribs were cut out before the body was mummified. The tomb itself, however, indicated that the pharaoh's death was sudden and premature. This was not the tomb of a king. 
It was too small, so it was probably requisitioned hastily from a rich official in order to complete in time the 70 days long burial ceremony. The first clues that indicated a murder came in 1968, when the mummy was examined under x-rays. British professor Richard Harrison, a specialist in anatomy, noticed a small piece of bone hanging on the left side of the skull. This could indicate that Tutankhamun was hit by a blunt object and he died of hemorrhaging. But the piece of bone could have also been the result of the mummy's removal in 1922, or it could have been the result of an unwary priest, given the rush of the pharaoh's mummification ritual. But the x-rays were again analyzed in 1996, when traumatologist Gerald Irwin noticed a dark spot in roughly the same area of the skull. Those dark spots usually appear when hemorrhaging occurs. But the position of the spot is at the base of the neck, not exactly where an assassin would place its head. Perhaps Tutankhamun's death would be more easily explained if we look at the why. Was there anyone who wanted the king's death? Who would have benefited from this? His wife, Anke Senamon, could have easily assassinated her husband, but it seems unlikely. Every account of the couple showed the pharaoh and his wife in a close and tender relationship. They were also trying to have children. The remains of the pharaoh's two stillborn children were found in his tomb. So who else wanted him gone? One major suspect is I, Akhenaten's former advisor and one of the most powerful officials in the state. He would have benefited the most from Tutankhamun's death. And he actually did. He followed the young pharaoh and sat in his throne. He also married his widowed wife, Akhen Senamon. His influence on Tutankhamun probably decreased over the years, and if his wife would give the pharaoh a successor, his chances of taking power would have diminished greatly. So if anyone ordered King Tut's death, it was probably this guy or Horemheb, the commander of Egypt's imperial army. He was also in a position of great power, and upon the pharaoh's death, he was the only significant high official who didn't leave an engraved memento at the tomb, which is a sign of great disrespect. And four years after Tut's death, Horemheb also seized power and became pharaoh. He also ordered the destruction of Tutankhamun and Ai's names, replacing them with his own. So, is this all just conjecture? The x-rays do seem to show that Tutankhamun was suffering from scoliosis, a deformation of the spine. If he was gravely ill, his premature death might not be so surprising. On the other hand, he is depicted as a great hunter, and he often participated in hunts. If he had scoliosis, he couldn't have been a hunter. But this opens up another possibility. He could have injured himself during one of the hunts, which would explain why his sternum and several ribs were removed. It could also explain why there was so much resin in the coffin. If he died far away from the palace, his body had to be preserved in resin to prevent it from decomposing, which normally starts within the first 24 hours after death. But now, this theory doesn't explain the fear that took hold of the royal court upon the pharaoh's death. Amazingly, Akan Senamon's letters, written on clay tablets, have miraculously survived to this day. She wrote to the Hittite king, Egypt's neighbor and enemy, begging him to send a prince to marry her. She also wrote in fear that one of the servants is a source of constant threat and that she would not marry a mere servant. She was most likely talking about I, who eventually did marry her, thus becoming pharaoh. More than 3,300 years after his death, Tutankhamun remains a mystery one that still fascinates and intrigues us. Thank you for watching this episode of 7 Facts. 
I hope this was interesting and informative, and maybe it even inspired you to look into it further on your own. If you liked this video, please thumbs up and subscribe. While you're downstairs, let me know what you think about this video. Please consider visiting my Patreon page and become a patron. The link is in the description. I hope to see you next time. Bye.